be more, gotta be more, it's gotta be more than these, it's gotta be more, gotta be more, it's gotta be more than these, it has gotta be more, gotta be more. Lift your hands to heaven. I need the oh, I need the every I need. Oh, bless me now. I come to Please sing it one more time I need you oh, I need you Sing it from the bottom of your soul Oh bless chapter 6 verse 3 while we stand we're just going to pray one prayer before we sit down your hunger for the things of God remains your greatest ticket to accessing more of God as much as God wants to be known as much as God wants to reveal himself he will not just sovereignly do that in the lives of men there's something from a man that must invite God into his space. You heard what Bishop said during the offering. Your hunger for God remains the door that opens you to more of God. You have to sustain that hunger. That is the reason why we are here. Your hunger takes you beyond any length. It takes you beyond any human limitation. Because there is something inside of you that is reaching out for something that is in God. And tonight, before we go into the business of the day, we want to cry to God and say, Lord, revive my hunger for you, that I may press into you. You look at this scripture. Look at this. It says, let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. So you will not just know God at your comfort zone. You must pursue the Bible call, he uses another word in, 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 in Luke's gospel. He calls it press. He said that men press into the kingdom. It will not come on the basis of comfort. It will come by a desperate and a passionate hunger that reaches out to God. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. And then he will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth so the god that you know can be revealed in your life in such a way that it begins to create notable impact around and about you he say it shall come like rain when rain falls it falls on the land of everybody so the knowledge of god you have can be the key to the deliverance of a nation want to cry and say lord this is the reason why i'm coming i come here every sunday I want to press into the knowledge of you. I want to go deeper into you. So Lord, revive my hunger. Revive my passion for the things of you that I will press into you more and more every day. Lift your voice wherever you are and make that a prayer to him. The hunger to press, the hunger to pursue the knowledge of the Lord. The hunger to follow into deep places. To pursue the deep things of God. To know God beyond face value. It's not just about getting your needs met. It's not only about what God can do for you. Yes, God can heal you. Yes, God can deliver you. Yes, God can provide for you. 
but the bible says let us pursue the knowledge of the lord can you cry to him tonight and say lord rekindle your hunger in my heart revive the passion the passion to seek in you the passion for more of you husband please pray wife pray young and old pray he's looking for men that will press into deeper knowledge of him men that will pursue greater dimensions of his power but it's time to return back to your first love it's time to return back to the lover of your soul he told the church of ephesus he said i have this thing against you that you have left your first love can you cry to him lord restore me to that place reignite that fire again not just about coming to church but about truly seeking you to know you can you cry to him can you cry to him can you cry to him Lord, I will bow to you, to no other God, but you alone. Lord, I will worship you, not in heaven. But you alone I will lay down my idol And gods that I've made The ones that I've faith in my heart So Lord, I will not It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's not about me. It is all about you. It's all about you. It's not about ministry. It's not about your finances. It's not about your material needs. It's not about the things that God can do for you. It is all about Him. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord is putting on my heart that we pray further along this line. Some of us started well with God some of you when you gave your, your heart to the lord when you gave your life to christ your sincere desire and pursuit was god it was nothing else as a matter of fact some of you were not were not this blessed but you were with god week in week out those were moments where you went through all kinds of persecutions all kinds of troubles but your faith in god remained solid but right now it seems as though some of us have traded that hunger that passion you once had we have traded it for other things some of us for ministry some of us for business some of us a little door that god has opened for you you don't even know if you are a christian again or not you can tell by your hunger you can tell by your passion how desperate are you for the things of god than for the things of this world the bible spoke about the rich young ruler 
the bible says he went to jesus and jesus said all that you need to do is obey the commandments and you'll be fine and he both said to jesus he said, i've done all that from my youth a young man he said from my youth then jesus said there is one thing lacking go your way sell all you have give it to the poor and then come and follow me and the bible says he went back sorrowful because he had many possessions so his pursuit was no longer eternal life it was now possessions material things it will it will interest you to know truly speaking that there are many even in ministry even pastors that there are many people who are pursuing god and their genuine desire is not really heaven it's not really god to know him it is about the things that god can do can we cry to him and say lord anything that has swallowed up my initial desire for you i surrender it before you this afternoon that's why you came you came here for an encounter but for you to be have access to that encounter you must surrender to him say lord i let go i surrender it is it my pride is it my reputation is it my prestige is it my title is it my gift my ministry my business my family some of you were doing good when you were single now you are married it's another thing entirely for some of us the things that god gave to you has taken the place of god in your life can you lift your voice and cry and say lord i surrender i surrender holy ghost holy ghost holy ghost holy ghost take your place take your place take your place take your place you are the holy ghost the holy ghost you are the holy ghost the holy ghost take your place take your place take your place can you surrender to him this afternoon surrender to him surrender surrender lay it all down before him lay everything down before him and get ready for an encounter Harabaka shake to roboko sialaba. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Breathe on me, O oh Lord. Breathe on me. The Lord, breathe on me tonight. Breathe on me, the Lord. Harabasham brahata kosia. This is the protocol for an encounter. It is when you empty yourself that He can fill you. in jesus name finally i want you to pray and say lord open my eyes this afternoon open the eyes of my understanding cause me to receive from your word and let everything that is not of god in my life give way for the glory of jesus to be manifested in me tonight lift your voice and pray briefly before we sit down say lord open my eyes to see Open my ears to hear, to listen. Open my heart to understand. Give me an encounter in your presence. Are you praying? Are you praying at all? You're not wasting time. Pray. Sharaha brakati sotoroho sena brahati. 
Zilo Rosa Brahana Gila Rahamanza In Jesus' name we pray. Can we pray one more prayer? Please pray, okay? This is, this is how you create an atmosphere in your life for God to encounter you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9. One more prayer and then we'll And I want you to pray this prayer with all sincere passion that is inside of you. Alright? Tonight anything that doesn't look like God in your life will fall apart and will give way. That the glory and the image of God will be manifested in your life. I didn't hear your amen. amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Next verse. See, I have, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. The first thing is to root out and to pull down to destroy and to throw down before to plant and to build every foundation that is not of god in your life will fall apart tonight anything that has been rooted in your life that is not of god will be uprooted tonight say after me in the name of jesus i can't hear you i can't hear you I decree and declare every evil foundation, every evil root that is not of God planted in my life tonight be uprooted, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and cry. May do great people, you don't pray. Lift your voice, new matter. Pray. Shibrahata Mabroko Siama. You are the God who was and is and is to come. Jesus, I can't hear you. Jesus, lift your voice and pray. And in you I trust, my life is in your hands. Jesus, you are the miracle working God. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Alpha and Omega. Please pray. Raise your voice and cry. 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 Every wrong foundation. This is the night when it will be uprooted. This is the night where every root of darkness will be uprooted and thrown down. <laughs> Shut up, let me come on. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I can't hear you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I thank you for the presence of the anointing. I thank you for your power that is in this place. Lord, I pray that the eyes of the understanding of your children will be open. I pray that you will give them ears to hear, hearts to listen, eyes to see. And Lord, after tonight, let there be deliverances. Let everything that you have not planted in our lives be uprooted. Let your children experience liberty. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Put your hands together for the King of Kings. Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. 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 It's good to see everyone again. You're welcome to Neumatic. And I want to assure you that you didn't waste your time to come. Amen. You are here to experience the wisdom, the presence, and the power of Jesus Christ. And your experience tonight will be nothing short of that in Jesus' name. Please bring out your writing materials, your Bibles. We are going to look at the Word of God briefly. And then we will stand up to pray. I want us to have enough time to pray today because... God wants to address some matters in our lives. Amen. Amen. God wants to address certain things in our lives. The response of your amen shows that you have faith to agree with me for what God will do. Amen. Amen. There are wrong foundations that will be corrected this night. And when you walk out of this place, you will walk out a victor, a champion, and you walk out with your testimonies in view. In Jesus' mighty name. So I want you to get ready. We thank God for all the testimonies that we record in this place. And I want you to know that our God, the God that we serve, is the God of the living and not the dead. He's still in the business of doing miracles. He's still in the business of turning the life of men around for good. Amen. And he's set to do that with us tonight. I promised us at the beginning of this year that we were going to have time to discuss quite extensively on a series of deliverance. And you see, you must treasure every place generally speaking now i'm not just referring to new matter alone but any place where the word of god is taught with simplicity yet with revelation depth with wisdom and in truth you must cherish such a place the greatest need of the church is light is knowledge that is what commands transformation in our life god did not save you so that you can just remain the way you are he saved you with the purpose of transforming you in the image of his dear son. And so, it is the word of God that is the architect of that process of transformation. And so, every time you hear the word of God, deliverance is happening. Because God is separating you from mindsets and from ideologies that are not Christ-like. And when you are, because the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. The reason why many people's life is the way it is, is not really because God is not powerful enough to do what they expect him to do. But it could be because they are ruled or controlled or governed by certain mindsets that are not scriptural, that are not Christ-like. The Bible says, have this same mind in you, which was in Christ Jesus. So the word of God will get us 
or get to occupy our thoughts the very mind of Christ and when we begin to think like Christ we become like Christ so it's not a waste of time that you are in this place and we expose you to the word of God that is the only thing that can guarantee your permanent transformation and guarantee that everything that God does in your life is permanent the Bible says that which the Lord does abided forever. You know why? Because it is done via the efficacy of his word. First Peter chapter 1 says it. That the word of God abided forever. So you may receive a miracle today. But if you don't have the word of God in your life. That miracle you are not guaranteed that it will be sustained. You may be lifted today. You are not guaranteed that you will remain in that elevated position except you have the word of god that gives you access access to seeing that this becomes a permanent resident in your life so it's not a waste of time that we take time here to teach the word some of you don't even know what you are becoming already this is just the third month in this year some of you need to check your life and look at from january when we started look at your life where you are where you were when you encountered this platform and where you are now and be grateful to god the miracle must not always be that there's money in your account no there may not be money in your account but there's knowledge you can possess that is more than any amount that you can have are you hearing what i'm telling you so commit yourself to the ministry of the word and the spirit of god and watch your life become a sign and a wonder that god can so transform you that you will now become an agent of transformation in your generation every great man you see today that god uses to bring liberation to bring freedom to bring deliverance to to be to be an emissary of his power to his people to a generation they were transformed via this system he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because the lord has anointed me until jesus found that scripture his ministry never began he said, your words were found and I ate them and they were the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. So, I want you to really treasure what you receive here. And I want you to make a commitment to the obedience and the practice of everything. If you go back and close your jotters and continue your life, nothing happened. The Bible says that we are not here as alone, deceiving ourselves. It would have been good you didn't hear anyway. Because if you didn't hear... At least you can you can say that was ignorance but if you heard and did nothing about it that is what i call deliberate ignorance is there anything like that there's something like that so but that you make a practice of everything you hear especially what you are going to hear today and watch how god transforms you from glory to glory and the name of god be exalted in jesus name so i promised us that somewhere in this year we were going to discuss about deliverance one of the things that salvation has brought to us or has made possible for us please make sure nobody distracts you today please listen attentively one of the things that one of the benefits of salvation is deliverance there are about five benefits basic benefits that salvation brings to a believer one of it is justification that your sins are forgiven and you are declared righteous before god one of it is deliverance the three others i will spare you because i'm writing a book on that the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and i've always asked a question mount zion is where mount zion the bible says in hebrews chapter 12 from verse 24 down that ye have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to an innumerable company of angels, to the church of the firstborn. So Mount Zion is the abode not only of God, but of his people. Mount Zion is that spiritual location where God and his people tabernacle together. So the church of Christ on earth is the physical manifestation of Mount Zion wherever we gather is mount zion because we as the church of the firstborn which is jesus christ we are present god is present angels are there 
and therefore everything that is possible in heaven can happen in that place yet the bible says it's upon mount zion that what will happen deliverance and today i will try my best by the word of god to help us understand why every believer needs to experience tremendously the ministry of it of deliverance whether you are a man of god whether you are a deacon in church you know when you become sincere with yourself and decide to open your life and your heart to the word of god that is when you truly receive and become a beneficiary of the things that are contained therein when you talk about deliverance a lot of christians don't want to identify with it because many people feel it is a shameful thing to identify with the fact that you are being limited or there are certain things in your life that impedes your advancement or your destination i don't know me i can't hear myself am i the only one but i can't hear myself it seems my voice is hiding please help me are, are you with me so if therefore the bible says that upon mount zion it is legitimate that the children of god experience the power of god's deliverance then we need to understand what the ministry of deliverance is all about but there are certain things that you must understand and come to terms with before we truly begin to discuss about deliverance so today will be a preview to this series next week we start the series today is just a preview and two or three sundays ago i gave us an assignment i'm going to give us another assignment today i will give you an assignment now and at the end of the service i'll give you another assignment say amen, amen. you have to like assignments here yeah, oh. it's for your good you don't submit it but it's good you even do it amen three years ago we did a teaching on deliverance and i titled it let my people go i don't know if the media have found it it's available thank you very much so i want to beg us about four part series on deliverance i want to beg every one of us either you go to the media stand after the service or just go online um we'll find a way to put the link on our social media handles and uh, so that you can have access to it we discuss extensively on some basic issues concerning deliverance we talked about uh, we talked about exhuming faulty foundations we talked about um, patterns evil patterns and uh, we talked about the mystery of witchcraft and I think there's one more again all of that will be a premise it will be the basics the foundations for what we are going to share this month so i want to plead with you after this service make sure you go online on all our, our our handles or go to the media stand directly if you are present if you are listening from anywhere please just go online the link will be available i want you to listen to the messages extensively so that when we start next week you will be able to understand where we are coming from and where we are heading to because this teaching on deliverance is going to be a build up from the last one there are a lot of things you can discuss about when you talk about deliverance but we want to major on a particular issue that i have seen that really disturbs more of believers if you are with me say amen so that is the reason why i plead with you to go and listen for it will bless you powerful messages especially the teaching on witchcraft because we are going to do it what i think one of the episodes will be on bewitchment not witchcraft now bewitchment we're going to talk about that extensively and my desire is not so that you can see the excellency of knowledge no that will that will that will it, it if if that's all we want to achieve here then this is a failed venture Paul said that my speech and my preaching was not in the excellency of words or in human wisdom but in the demonstration of the spirit and power it is not to show you how much we know it is to show you certain things that you will arm yourself with that can break away every limitation around your life so that you can have access to all that God has for you and God be praised in Jesus name 
so that's the reason why we are going to do the preview today so you have the whole of this week to go and listen to it at least once all right and god will help us in jesus name you know a lot of people a lot of believers like watching and listening to comedy they can watch comedy and listen to it online for hours but listen to a message for 30 minutes is a problem may god give you grace to be disciplined in jesus name are you ready isaiah 49 verse 24 to 25 thank you for your presence just keep playing just increase your volume and play is none like you I just sense the presence of God so strong that's why I'm singing no one else can touch my life as you do I can search throughout eternity Lord I found there is no like you. Can you just pray in the spirit? There is no like you. Just while you are seated, can you just pray in other tongues? I sense the presence of God so strong. There are people God is touching right now. Right now. This is your moment in the service. Just pray in other tongues while you are seated. I can search throughout if anything, Lord, and find that there is no like you. There is no like you. The hand of God is glorious in power my life as you do oh i can search throughout eternity lord and find there is no life spirit of the lord brew and breathe upon everyone here and everyone following online from whatever part of the nation or the world that they are following from I thank you for your tangible presence that is in this place there's someone here that the hand of the Lord is on the hand of God is upon you right now you are experiencing an impartation now and you are feeling it like something hot on your chest you can feel like heat you can feel like heat like something hot on your chest it's an impartation of the spirit of god that is coming and the lord says that impartation is releasing you to new dimensions of revelations divine revelations divine revelations divine revelations Thank you, Father. Listen, the power of God will be heavy in this place. I can sense it. Isaiah 49, verse 24 to 25. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the captives of the righteous be delivered? Permit me to use King James for this particular scripture. So let's go back and read it in King James. 
Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? This is a question. And I want you to consider every time the Bible is asking a question. It is for you to think and consider. Think about the question very properly. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Or the lawful captive delivered? What does it mean to be a lawful captive? When you bring law into it, it means that there is a legal basis for anything that is happening. So when you say a lawful captive, it means that the captor or the one who is oppressing has a legal base for oppressing or bringing into captivity the captive. Now this is not always the case. There are situations where, of course, the devil most of the time is illegal in his operation. It's illegal. Being that most of the things that the devil does are not things that God has designed to happen. The Bible says that the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill and destroy. A thief is not a legal, is not a lawful profession. A thief is not a, is, that's not an honest occupation. Everything that a thief does is illegal. And that's the reason why scripture says when a thief is caught, he must restore what he has stolen. There is no basis for why the thief should prey on the life of innocent people and take what belongs to them. So generally speaking, Many people are brought into yokes, into bondage, into all kinds of limitations that were not supposed to happen to them. Or better put, that many people are going through what they are going through in as much as it is not supposed to happen to them. On that base, the process for deliverance is simple and basic. But, this time around we want to deal with deliverance that is based on or based on legal captivity that the devil who the bible calls a thief who is illegal in his operations in your life as far as god is concerned now all of a sudden he has a right or he has a reason for why he's in your life are you are you following at all that's what, want, that's what we want to deal with in this particular series of deliverance. He says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? Lawful captives means that he captured them lawfully. He contended with them or he went to fight with them and then secured them under his oppression. He has the right to to plunder them or to prey on them and even God must respect and uphold that right the Bible says when it is in this condition is it possible that the lawful captive will be delivered but look at the next verse it says but thus said the Lord even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered how for i will contend with him that contended with thee and i will save thy children somebody say amen. amen now i want you to take note of the word contend in that place that god is saying even though satan has a legal ground even though satan has a right or a reason for why he has brought you under some form of operation for why he has brought you under a limitation for why he has perpetrated certain afflictions or works of evil in your life even though satan has a right or a reason to do that now if satan has a right or a reason at all in the life of a believer majorly it is because there is an element of disobedience or because the believer probably may have fallen short of god's standards or god's command or there is an access that has been opened to Satan to explore and exploit the life of that individual.
So, but this is how the Bible says God will deal with this kind of captivity. This is how God, God brings deliverance. The Bible says, I will contend with him that contends. Notice that the Bible didn't say, I will rebuke him that is contending with you. It didn't say, I will cast him off. The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall do what? Cast out demons. That is when the demon is in the life of that individual illegally. But now the devil has a right or a reason. He can argue his case for why this believer should be bound. He can argue his case for why your salary should be held for five months. Because there are many believers who are praying and they don't know that the reason why their prayers are not yet answered, it could be because Satan is standing in the heavenlies, resisting their prayers. Satan, let me, let me correct something. I know somebody just quoted for me in his heart that ah, we are in the New Testament. The Bible says it was in the Old Testament that Daniel, see, listen, Daniel's prayers were not held. It was his answer that was held. Are you hearing me? His prayer was not heard. He said, from the day that you set your heart to pray, he said, from that day your words were... So Daniel didn't even need to open his mouth to pray. From the day he conditioned his heart to pray, just like the psalmist says in Psalms 18 verse 3, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved. From the day Daniel decided to pray, God heard him. The problem was now the release of the answers. It had been released but Satan withheld the answer. So the Bible did not say that Satan cannot, with, cannot resist our prayers. It's only your answers that Satan can no longer withhold. And there are reasons for that which I don't have time to go into this night. But as far as resisting the prayers of the saint is concerned, there is a system in the kingdom of darkness that does that. That's the reason why this series of deliverance we are going a step further. Because there are families here that have been praying for long. And it's time for you to see the evidence of your consistent and continuous cry. It seems I came to church alone myself. It seems you are not interested in this teaching. It looks strange. One of the reasons why I born in my heart to teach this is because as I minister to people as a man of God, day in day out for the past few years i have seen issues in the life of people that have made me almost cry especially when it is a believer how about a person who pays his tithe and has been consistent in his tithing for 10 years yet they remain on one spot It's not like they are not paying their time. They are. They seem to be doing everything well the way it should be. Why am I here? Jeremiah asked the question like that in Jeremiah chapter 15. He said, why is my pain like this? That's a prophet crying. That's a covenant child of God crying. Why is my pain like this? And God had to answer him and say, see, the reason why you are in this pain, though you are a covenant child of mine, but there is a lawful captivity satan has secured the right he has secured the place and unknown to you he has exploited you from that angle again and again the bible says in zechariah chapter 3 that, Ze that joshua the high priest was standing before the angel of the lord joshua was the high priest the high priest was the one anointed by god to be the chief mediator between the nation of israel and god he went into the holy of holies once every year to offer blood for the atonement of their sin and it is on the strength of that atonement that they can receive the blessings of God and have the presence of God dwell continually amongst them. Yet, the high priest that was supposed to atone for them, the Bible says Satan was resisting him. Notice that the Bible said he was wearing filthy garments. And the Bible didn't say he looked at his garment. Because this was something that was happening in the spirit. Possibly in the physical the high priest has always been going to offer sacrifice. But it looked like God had been quiet over the children of Israel. It looked like their, enemy, their enemies were still attacking and gaining the advantage over them. Things were not working and they were asking him questions. What is wrong? 
he probably have made them do all kinds of sacrifice yet nothing was happening innocently he didn't know that in the spirit realm he was putting on filthy garments and that gave satan a right when the devil has a right to bring captivity it takes god to bring deliverance are you here are you interested in this teaching that's why the bible says i will contend the word at <laughs> and this week while i was meditating on this teaching god just underlined that word for me he said the key to the understanding on this kind of deliverance is that word he said i will contend that means i will wrestle i will fight hold on god satan is not the enemy of god according to scripture because for a, an individual to qualify as an enemy he must be an opponent of equal capacity and strength the bible says in first peter chapter 5 verse 8 it says be sober be vigilant for your adversary it is a god's adversary your adversary who did he call him the devil goes about like a roaring lion seeking who he will devour he didn't call him god's adversary in fact the adversary of god according to scripture is the flesh he said the spirit warreth against the flesh and the flesh so god can deal with any other enemy but the flesh the bible didn't say god cancels the flesh he said the spirit warreth <laughs> so your flesh can be that powerful that's why the bible says give satan no foothold how do not live according to the pleasings and the dictates of the flesh So God should not be contending with him that contends with you except for the fact that he that is contending with you has a legal stand. He has a right that has cemented his foothold. He is there on a justified base. And if God were to just ask him to get out, he can accuse God of being unfair. And God is a God of justice, judgment and equity. The Bible told us in the book of Job chapter 1, the Bible speaks of Satan. The Bible says that while the sons of God appeared before God, Satan was in their midst. And God did not say, Satan, get out. You will ask yourself a question. How did Satan manage to penetrate and then stand in the presence of God? I thought the Bible says God, our God is a consuming fire. I thought the Bible says he hides himself in light. He is light himself. And there is no verilness, neither any shadow of turning. I thought that Satan would be so scared of coming to the presence of God. Yet, because of a man, Satan had the right to come. Because their discussion was about who? It was about a man called Job. And God said, where are you, Satan? Where have you been? He said, I've been going up and down the earth. Now, do you think that the devil is truly walking up and down like that? No. He doesn't have that time he's not omnipresent like god so because he had been in god's army for a long time he decided to copy the structure and the system that he saw there satan does not walk up and down no satan has a strong and intelligent network of spirits of demons and of human agents notice what i said of spirits of demons and of human agents everywhere he has been on the earth for thousands of years so there's no family on this earth that he has not studied about so just in case you, the reason why you are running away from the call of being a pastor or a man of god is because you don't like battles <laughs> even where you are you are already in, you are you are at a crossroads you are at a battle you, what do you call it you are the front lines of a battle he has been on this earth for thousands of years and he knows that the unit of human society is family so there is no family that is not under satan's research system there is no research system on earth apart from heaven there is no other system on earth any any academic system that is as strong and intelligently connected like satan's demons research oh. they research very well the bible calls him an accuser Huh? or better put he's a pro, what they call a uh, prosecutor there are lawyers that they call prosecutor isn't it and they are the ones that uh, they call them prosecution counsel 
So in it being a law for him to qualify as a lawyer, lawyers are not are not uh, dumb people. They read, they study cases. Even when the person they are defending is guilty of it, they will say plead not guilty. Then they go back to the law and search the law. And you hear some of them quoting. That's why people usually say that lawyers are liars. I don't believe that, but people say it. You will hear this lawyer quoting. You know that his client is at fault. But you hear him quoting the constitution. Section this, subsection this, of this, of this. And he will bend the law in such a way that you, that you are a lame man. You will say there is no need to argue this case. If an earthly lawyer can do that, how much more Satan, who was created before man? So you step out with the call of God on your life, and God has spoken to you. Great destiny. Nations are waiting. I will send you as my light to bring deliverance. I say, okay, yeah, Satan say, here comes another one, another colossus from the kingdom of God. He said, but the good thing is he's still a man. So we can we still have an advantage. He said, oh yeah, put a research on his family. And then they go hundreds of years back and begin to search through the family, unknown to you. Why? He's looking for a case against you. He said, but I will contend with him that contends with that means warfare this kind of deliverance is warfare this is not the kind of deliverance where you just go and a man of god say in the name of jesus out no this is the kind of the because satan has a right he has a reason there is a foothold that he has secured this kind of deliverance will happen by contention that's the reason why if you are not prayerful enough get ready to remain in captivity most times it's people that don't pray that need more deliverance as i have seen so that when you start when we say pray this night and you stand up to pray if you need to remove your wig as a woman and keep it one side are you hearing me you are a young girl you are wearing wig to pray and you are so careful with that wig on you no guy has proposed to you remove that wig It's better the wig fall off and your heavens are open than for, than for it to remain. <laughs> Amen. It's not by buying Brazilian hell. There are many ugly ones that people rush after. It's what follows you in the spirit. Are you, are you hearing what I'm telling you? Lawful captives. Believe me, I've seen things. I've seen things in people's life. I've seen things. In fact, I have seen things that I didn't even have the words to pray. They came for prayers. I, I could not pray. I've seen the, oh, Satan is a, is a masterpiece. I've seen manipulations of the enemy in the life of people that if God did not reveal to you, you the man of God, you will not know where the problem is coming from. But the Bible says, I will contend with him that contends with you. Tonight, there will be contention. Amen. And there will be victory. Amen. So the Bible is not silent about the issue of lawful captivity. That Satan the accuser, Satan the oppressor, extensively has some form of right or has secured foothold in the lives and the destinies of many believers but god has a promise to contend with him the bible is not quiet about these kinds of forces remember where we read the bible calls them the mighty and the terrible these are spiritual forces spiritual powers spiritual enemies that are strong enemies somebody says strong enemies he calls them the mighty the mighty psalms 18 do you know that there are times when you are dealing with enemies that are too strong that are very strong powers that refuse to break loose i don't know about you if you have gone on the three days fasting and prayer before and after the fasting and prayer, the oppression continued. I've seen people 
who have fasted have, oh god i have had to i've had the privilege of praying for a number of people who have gone into fastings in fact dry fasting and in their fasting oppression still comes again and again and again and i realized that there are some terrible enemies that the bible calls strong enemies in isaiah there where we read he calls them mighty he calls them terrible psalms 18 let me show you another scripture verse 17 he delivered me from my strong enemy from those who hated me for they were too strong for me so there are some enemies that are too strong when you are dealing with an issue that is connected to your foundations your biological foundations when you are dealing with an issue because an issue that has to do with something that keeps you at the disadvantage and keeps the enemy at the upper hand when you are dealing with wicked spirits that are bent on securing your life or your family or the descendants of the family where you come from under what I call perpetual captivity. These are what we call strong enemy. Remember that in Genesis 49, Jacob was blessing his children. He was prophesying to them and telling them what will happen. He spoke to one of his sons called God. He said to him, he said, God, a troop shall overcome him. Uh -uh. Why are you saying him? Look at the God there. You would have just said a troop shall overcome you. But he was not just talking to God. Jacob had walked with God. He was one of the patriarchs of the covenant. The Bible says the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. These three men are the patriarchs of the covenant that we now enjoy in Christ Jesus. It was them that God began first to have dealings with on earth and to establish his covenant. It, in fact, it is on the strength of the covenant that God has in, with Abraham that Jesus and the redemption that brought salvation was possible. Galatians chapter 3 he says in verse 13 that Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Being made a cause for us as is written, cause is anyone that hangs on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham, not Jesus Christ, of Abraham. So these are men that had covenants with God. And whatever they had with God was perpetual from one generation after another. So they understood that every time God spoke, God will not speak to a man alone. He speaks to the man and to his seed. So every time a word comes to you, when you are receiving amen, know that it is not only to you. It is also to your children, to your children's children, even to the fourth generation. Have you ever known that before? That's why the prophecy stops with one generation most times. And Jacob told him, he said, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at last. Jacob was seen many years later that the forces of hell was going to gang up against this one tribe. They were going to experience satanic oppression to a point where the Bible says in the New Testament, Jesus crossed over to the other side, the other side of the lake after surviving a storm. Guess who was the first person to welcome him? The red carpet reception was, was, was arranged by a man that the Bible called a demoniac in a land called Gadarenes. Remember, who did Jacob speak to? God. Jesus crossed over to another side called what? Gadarenes. These were the descendants of God. And the Bible says, here comes a man with legions of demons. The word legion is also troop. A legion is a troop of at least four to 6,000 soldiers. 3,000 on horses and 3,000 on ground. In one man. That's what the psalmist meant when he says, He delivered me from my strong enemy, for they were too strong. How do you deal with 6,000 demons? And this one was a lawful captive. This was not the type that you say, Go, and they will go. So Jesus tried casting out the demons, but they, they refused to go. Then Jesus knew he was dealing with lawful captivity. He said, How, what is your name? He said, We are legion, for we are many. There are strong enemies. There are powers. I'm telling you the truth. There are unseen powers that it takes God to reveal to you that are over families, that are over nations. Can't you look at the GDP and the economy of some nations? There are some nations that year in, year out, they work in perpetual poverty. There is nothing you can do about the economy of that nation that rises. Some of them are in Africa. We are complaining about our Naira. There are some nations that our Naira is something else. Our Naira can be almost a thousand in their currency. 
there are some nations that no matter the structure they put in place people still die because of sickness i'm talking about spirits and powers that are strong spirits and powers that operate in the foundation of families they operate in the family everybody that has been in ministry in that family has had to battle and deal with them so they don't show up until somebody rises and wants to preach the gospel in that family then they come these powers can be attached to thrones these powers can be attached to offices there are some states in this country that they see they need serious prayers i'm telling you the truth no matter who ascends there as the governor nothing good happens in that in that state with all due respect there is a state in nigeria that state has the largest local government in west africa as, as, as i was told by my research and that largest local government is the most undeveloped yes last night i was watching the documentary about a particular local government in a state in the middle belt i won't mention the name and i almost cried generals have come from that place even a former senate president you will know who i'm talking about all kinds of great people but there is no good road in that place i say is he a cause there are powers strong powers they fight development you go try and do a road there That's why in this life, eh, don't set out for anything if you have not first of all sought the will and the face of God. He said, trust in the Lord your God with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will die. He's the one that will show you that see, actually, Satan has a case against your family 42 generations before you. And that's why nobody that does business and rises stays up. They go down so you can't attempt to do like this because you may just be repeating the mistakes of 42 generations the bible says in second corinthians 2 verse 11 that we must not be ignorant of satan devices these are his devices spirits powers demons forces attach and you know one thing with the devil he's a master oppressor if he secures anyone under his captivity his intention is to keep them in captivity till they are destroyed the thief cometh not but to steal to kill and you think after killing he will just go like that you know there are some armed robbers that they will come your money and they collect the money and go there are some that will even snatch your phone and go there are some that will come collect your money collect your phone beat you up satan is worse than all but how many of you believe that our god that we serve is able to bring deliverance you are going to pray this night i want to show you 12 signs that you are under satanic manipulation if you see any of these 12 signs in your life any of these you need deliverance you need deliverance fast you need the help and the hand of god at work whether you are a pastor whether you are an engineer whether you are a doctor you schooled in england you went to oxford or you went to john hopkins hospital in in america you did your de demons don't know degree are you hearing me that degree can be paper if a spirit lands on it you will keep submitting those CV and it will be blank paper. It will be tissue paper. They will be seeing tissue paper in their drawer. That's the HR. Meanwhile, you submitted CV. Why? A spirit is involved. I remember a day. I was doing, then I was, I was still at my former house. I was counseling that day. And a woman came, one of the people to counsel. And as soon as she opened the door and came in, my eyes opened very very just in a brief in a few seconds briefly my eyes opened in the spirit and i saw a monkey i mean a monkey hanging on her left hand and on her left hand was her handbag it was hung there i saw a monkey hanging on the back i said madam what's wrong with your finance she said ah apostle she she fell down on the ground I said, apostle that's that's the problem she was looking good 
but there was a spirit from hell that had been released on her finances so anything physically she gathers but that spirit steals such that you are seeing the money but you don't know what you do you used to use it to do have you seen that before that i will show you 12 signs if you see any of these signs in the life of anybody they need deliverance fast i don't care whether they are bishops respectfully or they are a deacon or whatever satan no no that one no in fact if you are a man of god and you are called into ministry you must be very sincere if you find any of these signs in your life to to look for the hand of god and secure deliverance fast because trying to behave as though nothing is happening is only leading you to perpetual oppression you will watch how god will use you for people but you will remain in that pit yourself how many pastors have i not seen that pray for people and god lifts them and they forget the pastor it's not ordinary some of you are here there are people you have helped they are big men now they are, they are high politicians or they are business people some of them are even abroad but for the past five years you have been looking for how to reach out to them twelve signs are you ready number one sign number one a consistent pattern of losses and failure a consistent pattern of losses and failure isaiah chapter 42 verse 22 a very interesting scripture a consistent pattern of losses and failure but this is a people robbed and plundered look at the state of these people they are robbed and they are plundered all of them are snared in holes and they are hidden in prison houses they are for prayer no one delivers for plunder and no one says restore consistent losses and failure they are robbed and plundered you know what it means to plunder a person to take everything even the one they hide i've seen people that the moment money enters their hand all kinds of problems in fact the problems you have you if you are those of you who have written exams where the 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 the, 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 the exam is just two questions number one and number two but number one has a b c and d a has roman numeral i roman numeral i i have you seen that kind of and they say it's just two questions now there are problems like that the more you try to solve the problem it turns to another thing it turns to another thing and then he, he spends all the entire salary for that month and as soon as he finishes two days later the person is fine or you see a situation where the person is sick they go for all kinds of scans that, in fact that one when you see that one no need for hospital again most times I, I i thank god for medical science okay we have a lot of medical professionals here and i have a lot of medical professionals as friends but one of the reasons why i i i i, I encourage people to go for medical diagnosis is i want to know whether it is a physical issue or a spiritual issue so the person goes for scan for test this and this that and that and they say there's nothing wrong but the person is dying that's all bring him there's a spirit involved he said they are robbed and they are plundered they are snared in holes they are hidden in prison houses prison houses demonic and satanic prison houses they are for prayer no one delivers in other words they will remain a prey they will remain in captivity if there's no shout of deliverance judges chapter 6 let me show you an example of this scripture there was a time in the nation of israel in the time of the judges the bible says they did evil before god and god sold them into captivity chapter 6 from verse 1 and the bible describes extensively the weight of captivity that they were under in this under this particular king then the children of israel did evil in the sight of the lord so the lord delivered them into the hands of midian for seven years you think seven years is brief look at what they experienced for seven years 
go on and the hand of the media of Midian prevailed against Israel because of the Midianites the children of Israel made for themselves dens and caves hold on where we came from in Isaiah I said they are hidden in caves in holes isn't it look at an example here he said because of their cap their captors they had to go and hide inside dens and caves there are some families that have never gone to their village in the last 20 years don't look at me like that some of you are there in fact now that i just mentioned village you started saying god forbid in your mind because you know where you came from say amen I know <laughs> one time years ago we were traveling and we we're passing by a particular village in a state I won't call the name of the state and I saw that there were many gigantic buildings there but most of the buildings were uncompleted including the ones where people were staying inside and somebody who knew the terrain of that place in the bus was pointing to us say this one or this person get her this one or this person this one belongs to this person this one belongs to this i said why are the houses not completed but they are gigantic structures that you, you if they are completed you you will wonder what an architectural piece this is and the person said well it is in the tradition of this village that if you complete your house you will die Why are you laughing? You don't know whether you are from there. I didn't call the name of the village. Ah. So the man will be building a house for 20 years. And if you don't build, you will die. So you have to start building. The moment you complete the house, they are taken for a prey and non delivers. Tonight there will be liberation. Oh. Tonight, the God of God will thunder in the camp of the enemy. He said they made for themselves dens and caves and strongholds which are in the mountains. Go on. It gets worse. He said, so it was. Whenever Israel had sown, Midianites would come up. Also, Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. Then they will encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance for Israel. Neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. What kind of wickedness is this? Go on. For they will come up with their livestock and their tents coming in as numerous as locusts. Both they and their camels were without number and they will enter the land to destroy it. They didn't harvest it. They just came to destroy have nothing for yourself work in civil service for 30 years and all you have is one car all you have is a two bedroom flat that you've not completed sometimes i don't blame some parents when you see them putting all their hope and putting pressure on their children say now you you are a hope oh, go and become something oh. probably the powers they've contended with were too strong for them And now you want to rise up and you think just by being a doctor and traveling abroad it will happen. <laughs> you must fight some battles. He says, so Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Consistent pattern of losses and failures. Every time you find this in the life of an individual, is under satanic attacks he needs deliverance the bible says that you shall not build and another inhabit i think that's isaiah 65 verse 22 he says you shall not build and another in inhabit he says you shall not labor and another would bear it he says you shall eat your labor and the fruit of your hands right so but when you are not able to eat that which you have labored for when there are losses that are mysterious to you. I have even had the privilege of praying with people who money mysteriously gets missing physically. They put 10,000 in the wardrobe, especially in this, in this cashless period. Every thousand is important. Number two. Sign number two, pessimism and resistance to change. 
resistance to change pessimism and resistance to change what is pessimism pessimism simply is having a negative view about life having a negative impression about the things happening around you or having a negative mindset when a person is pessimistic it means they are negative in their approach they don't see good they have no hope about things that will happen in fact most times their confession is always in negativity have you seen those kind of people before run away oh. that's broad daylight satanic attack you are watching mobile attack and sometimes it's because of the too many challenges around them when you find pessimism consistently in the life of an individual he's under satanic attack satanic manipulation he needs deliverance resistance to change one of the signature of demon spirits is they don't like positive change they don't like change matthew chapter 12 from 43 to 45 jesus was giving us um, a narrative of what happens when a demon is casted out he said when a demon spirit is casted out it will go through dry places why dry places that's for another day seeking rest and he will not find none he said then he will say to himself i will go to my house you know he's calling house a human being my house and the bible says when he goes there and sees that the house is swept clean and empty in other words you the demon was casted out the person was free but he, he was not born again or perhaps he became born again and he's not on fire for god he has gone back to his worldly things he has gone back after material things he's not in the he's not interested in pursuing god he's only interested about the things of this world the bible says at that state he's empty and ready for another possession that the spirit will go and take seven other demons more wicked than himself and come back and occupy that man you know why demons don't like change they want to keep that person under perpetual possession and captivity when a person is possessed watch very carefully they don't like to do anything new they don't like to make progress have you seen friends like that around your life i came to tell you with all due respect they are possessed <laughs> with all due respect nothing new anytime you introduce something new for them just make an advancement in life do something with your life you are a young person for god's sake no he tries and goes back no he's afraid he's under satanic attack serious attack this attack is so strong that it has caught up with his mind so he doesn't even know he's being possessed and you as a lady say one married that person then you now brought the picture to church you brought the picture now to church and you have you want to give me after the service i should pray and look at it i'll put it on your face it doesn't no nothing new that's a sign that's a sign remember in acts chapter 13 when paul and, and barnabas went to preach the gospel in a, in a city the first city they went to preach the gospel after they were sent the bible says they got access to the governor of that city and why they were trying to proclaim the gospel and the way of god to the, the man so that the man imagine if they had converted that man the entire city the bible says there was a man that was standing there a magician his name was bar jesus that means the man was a jew yeah he was a jew some people that a man's enemies are those of his household though he was a jew like paul <laughs> he didn't want any new thing to come because anywhere the gospel goes light goes civilization goes progress goes the bible says he stood there and resisted paul and paul had to declare judgment on him those are one of the signs number three nervous breakdown nervous breakdown and you can add to this one affliction that is physical affliction too some sickness are actually satanic and demon oriented nervous breakdown psychological or emotional conditions either it is depression the person is suffering from depression the person is suffering from despair or the person is suffering from discouragement is demonic 
I thank God for psychiatric doctors, psychology and psychiatric medicine. But the truth is, <laughs> many of those psychiatric conditions are demons. Go to the hospital. They, what they call it? Neuropsychiatric. Go there and say in the name of Jesus two times in the hall. If you don't see any manifestation, come back. They just gather a bunch of people. They say, say they, are, they are, what do you call them? They are, they are, they are mentally, mentally imba, mental imbalance. He says polarized. There's one kind of condition called polar. Every mental condition, as far as me, I'm consigned has a demonic undertone. Believe me, I'm telling you. Ask the doctors. You know, it's more frustrating as a doctor when you have you have applied all that you know concerning that condition. You studied it extensively. Just when you think the person is getting well, the person begins to react again. Somebody is calling his name from his village. Oh. Don't waste your time as a doctor. <laughs> Somebody is calling the name somewhere. Nervous breakdown. Depression. So I don't want to talk to anybody again. Have you seen people like that? They don't go to church. They are depressed. What, that, what is happening to that person? The, spiritually, if God opens your eyes, there is a cloud over that person. A dark cloud. You can't see it with these two naked eyes. These eyes are too dim. There's no light in these two eyes to see spiritual things. You need the light that comes from Elohim himself. The Bible calls it the true light. When God opens your eyes, you see like a cloud. You know this cloud in the sky. You see it like that on their head. Dark. That is the reason why depressed people, when they come out of depression, ask them, what made you depressed? They can't point their hand on one thought. It's just a mental commotion. It's just like when it is a cloudy day and your DSTV is telling you, no signal. Oh, you understand now? Are we here? Can I go on? Depression. It's a very terrible satanic consp conspiracy. Satanic attack. I will never believe that depression comes. It may be, it may be instigated by certain things. Some, and most, sometimes it is instigated by one of these other signs. For instance, failure. When a man has failed again and again and again, he becomes what? Depressed. Is that not a sign? That's a sign. An advanced depression is when the person wants to be on his own. I'm coming there. One of the things depression will do to a man is it will make you quiet. You can't talk. Meanwhile, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21, Death and life lies in the power of the tongue. And those that love it will eat the fruit thereof in verse 20 say a man's belly shall be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth so the devil gets you depressed so that you can shut up and not prophesy life and break out of that season to a new season the next thing will be go and kill yourself so when you are passing lagos bridge that bridge as you are passing and looking at it, you say, I rebuke the spirit of depression in this place. Despair, discouragement. Number four sign. I'm rushing because of time. Lack of zeal for the things of the spirit. Lack of zeal for the sins of the spirit. Lack of zeal. The Bible has instructed us in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. It says that we should be steadfast and unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Romans 12, 11 says, Be not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit. In Proverbs, it says, Be zealous for the Lord all day. When you find lack of zeal for spiritual things in a man's life, he's under satanic manipulation. A systematic one. In fact, well planned. Well planned. And you know, if he's a believer, he'll try to spiritualize the reason why he's there. That pastor is my work. You know, I go to work 8 to 5. Mondays to Fridays. Even on Saturday, I go to work. That's why you don't pray again. That's why you're no longer zealous. When was the last time you fasted? You are just, he's playing you like draft. Have you played draft or chess? Yeah, he's playing you to his court. Jesus told the church of Laodicea, he said, if you are neither hot nor cold, meaning if you are neither on fire for me or you are just Cold. I mean, you are. You don't have anything to do with Christianity. If you are lukewarm, you say, "I will spit you out." You must be on fire always, at all times. Lack of zeal. 
Lack of zeal, and that's why they don't go to church. Hebrews 10, what did he say in verse 20, 24 to 25? I think in verse 25 he said that we should not forsake the gathering of the saints. When you no longer like spiritual atmospheres, you no longer, you no longer like the gathering of God's people. Every time they say prayer, you are always doing like this, like golden moon. Brother, something's wrong. Something, uh, yes. When you put golden moon in hot water, that's, that's how it something's wrong something's wrong with you you were not like that before you were on fire before you were you, in, in the university you were the leader of the prayer band now you came you graduated after you service you got the job five years later you are married who are you now a potential unbeliever when you see other people speaking in tongues they say hey, we were there we were there before you know some people in school they only follow god to pass exam that's why they were in the fellowship pass exam and give me a good job now that they've gotten everything, say, God, we will see you on the last day. May God not allow you to die in that state. Lack of zeal. Second Timothy, Paul warned Timothy in chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5. He told him, he said, in the last days, there will be perilous times. He said, for men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves. That's what brings lack of zeal for God. That's what brings lack of zeal for the things of the Spirit. Self. You exalt self above God. And because of that, they will be lovers of money. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, always complaining. You can't thank God even for the last one God did. You are complaining because you've not gotten the job in the INGO. Who told you that God needs an INGO job to bless you? Some of you need to rephrase your prayers. You can't choose. He's the source of the blessing. Men are channels. The blessing of the Lord, not NGO. The blessing of the Lord, make it rich and added no soul. NGO cannot make you rich, let me tell you. If you think being rich is by having one million on your account, let me tell you the thing with money. As it comes, it goes. You don't get rich because you have money. You get rich and wealthy because you build systems of wealth that produce for themselves. Have you seen some, see some, there are some men that once their money, I took, <laughs> once their account drops to 100,000, ah, he's angry with everybody. Because in his own, in his own knowledge, he's poor. You know why? Because he needs it to be 1 million so that he can go to command on Friday. Or what's that place? Trailer Park. I'm pinching some of us this night, ba. I love you. He said, 100,000, 100, he can't declare for one table. So he needs at least, 300, 500 is a like, so I can go to Trailer Park. For those of you listening online, Trailer Park is a place in Meduguri where they do things. Amen. So that I can go there and declare and drink pepper soup. And you know, that's why some people want to make money. But when they talk about the things of God, no. You push him, he can at, at most give you 10,000. Say, God, I try now. Lack of zeal. Number five, prayerlessness. Prayerlessness. That's what I call spiritual shutdown or spiritual death. That is a sign that you are under satanic manipulation. That is a sign that you need deliverance. Prayerlessness. The Bible says that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says, pray without ceasing. There is no gift of prayer. There is no uh, um, grace of prayer. No, 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 no. Prayer is a discipline. It is in the discipline that the grace of God is extended to you. So the measure of the grace of God extended to you is, is in, in paripasu, or it is proportional to the level of discipline you give. You discipline yourself to pray. If you don't pray when you are in pleasure, you will pray under pressure. If you play today, you will pay tomorrow. You pray at all times. You need it for survival. God has blessed you. Thank you. You need to. 
You heard the testimony of our mother. As soon as she was promoted to that position, started seeing in her dream, she started seeing snake and cat. I say, ah, no, be only that one. No, very soon, even lion and tiger. <laughs> When you were just doing your thing, you were fine. Now they have made you member of house of assembly. Welcome. You have become visible to some demons. The first thing they will do is, okay, he's a prayerful person. Let's get him to engage so he doesn't pray. And once prayer shuts down in your life, your spiritual command tower is off. Your generating house is off. God has been shut out of your life. The devil comes in. And the Bible says in Revelation 12, it says, Woe to you, inhabitants of the earth, because the devil has come down to you with great anger, for he knows that his time is short. Satan is a destroyer. He destroys more than termite. But today, God will reignite your fire for prayer. Number what now? Number six, lack of love for people. Lack of love for people. You say, I may they just did their own, I will my own. You are under satanic manipulation. John 13, 34 to 35, a new commandment I've given to you that you love one another. Say, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Not when you pray, when you love, you have love for one another. Love is the greatest sign of Christ in you. The devil will get you to hate people. He will possess your heart with hatred. He will possess your heart in such a way that you are not willing to forgive when people offend you. And let me tell you the truth. You don't love people because they deserve it. Love is unconditional. You love because it's a command. The Bible spoke about First John in First John chapter 3. The Bible spoke about the evil one, Cain. That Cain was a seed from the evil one. Why? Because he hated his brother. Lack of love for people is one of the signs. Number seven, loneliness. Loneliness. In other words, unwillingness to associate with other believers, other people. Unhealthy, solitary confinement. You just want to be alone. You don't want to talk to anybody. That's what I call depression in its advanced stage. Loneliness. It can be a sign that you're under satanic manipulation. Number eight, lack of kingdom mindedness. You are not bothered about the things of God, about church, about the kingdom. Your life is not committed in any way to advancing the kingdom. You are still debating tight up till now. Lack of kingdom mindedness. You can gang up with unbelievers in your office and betray a believer. No brotherhood. No kingdom mindedness. You know, believers, let's, let's tell ourselves the truth. Now we fight ourselves pass. Yes. Now we they fight ourselves pass. These guys are more connected than us. They don't care their tribe as long as you hit this place to the ground. All of them will stand behind one man. That's why the man that you are chanting for, they say he didn't win. Abi? they said that he didn't win. Why? Because some of us in the church went behind and collected money and people should not blame only the INEC chairman. Who. There are some people there in the system too that collected and this year may God punish anyone. Barakata <laughs> balasika you may not like me, but this is the truth. This, this is a year of judgment. I told you since last year. Last year I told you that this year will be a year of shakings and judgment. Anyone that has sold himself to corruption and evil and is a perpetrator, a conspirator, to the reason why Nigeria is like this, this year, may God judge them. You sell, you sell your people. You betray. Don't blow. No kingdom mindedness. What did he say in Peter? He said, honor God, love the brotherhood, and fear the king. You come to an office. Some of you, the people that are fighting in your office, they are waiting with their name, Christian. Michael. Peter. Abby. 
Peter. At least Peter denied Jesus. He didn't fight Jesus. This is what I didn't. Number nine. Hard labor, yet little or no result. Hard labor, yet little or no result. I read that scripture for you, Isaiah 65, verse 22 to 23. It says, They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall enjoy the work of their hands. Verse 23, They shall not labor in vain. But there are people who are laboring in vain. Yes or no? You have been building one house for 10 years. What kind of house is that? Are you building underground? Even if you are building underground, have you not finished by now? No car you buy can stay for at least one month without problem. Labor in vain. You invested here, it went down. You invested here, it went down. Now, this one that you invested, you are already hearing news. Hard labor. Hard labor. Hard labor. Somebody say, God forbid. Bishop Oedepo say, smart work is better than hard work. If hard work was the pathway to riches, stone breakers would have been the richest. You know what it means to break that stone? Firewood. There was a time in my life many years ago, you know, I was born to a pastor's house. And I had my share of the sugar cane of missionary. You understand? So I remember that time, we'll have to, I'll go with my mother, we'll climb some hills, go inside that village there in Abuja, somewhere in Abuja, behind um, Abacha Barracks or so, and we'll, we'll gather firewood. Because if you buy the firewood at home, it was three for 20 naira at that time. 2005, 2006. And you need, you need to cook beans, cook all those. So we'll go kilometers. They will tie it. 100 naira firewood, they'll tie it one side. 18 naira firewood, tie it another side. I will carry the 18 naira on. My mother will carry the 100 naira. And we'll trek down so that that firewood can last for one week. And I understand what it means to labor. I ask myself, I say, people who do this as a business, as a profession, how much do they make? Anyone that is connected to you, that the enemy has kept under perpetual hard labor, today I announce their deliverance. I said, today begins their year of jubilee. In the name of Jesus. Let's finish up. Number 10. Consistent nightmares and wrong illusions. Consistent nightmares and wrong illusions. <laughs> Don't call it a dream. Oh. It is what is happening in the spirit realm. It is not just a dream. It is a reality playing out from another dimension. Nightmares. People pursuing you. People fighting you. People flogging you. Or you see yourself in your secondary school. Or you are writing an exam that doesn't finish. Huh? Can I continue? There are different types. Every time somebody walks into your life, a man, he says, I, I like you, I want to marry you. Before you know you sleep and somebody comes and sleep with you. One month later, the same person that says, I love you, I'll marry you, is no longer picking your calls. He's running from you. Now, this is your fifth boyfriend. And you think he's ordinary. Nightmares. Satan knows how to attack through that place. For some other people, he makes them see what we call wrong illusions. False illusions. Your mother's face. He will use your mother's face to appear to you. Your innocent mother. And your mother will be pursuing you with firewood. They will come and say, Hey! Apostle Tokam, say now judgment, judgment. I, I see the person. Calm down. Calm down. A house divided itself against itself. So that's how Satan will destroy the family. I'm not saying that there are some family members that are not evil. They are. They are, I'm telling you. But not all, not all the case. 
you have to be careful dreams don't come with literal interpretation no you need the wisdom of god to be able to interpret some dreams satan is playing mind games on you some people wake up because of a dream they had and all through that day their life is miserable so you have concluded on a false image that satan showed you you have concluded on a lie didn't the bible say that he's the father of lies but the bible says i know the plans i have for you says the lord thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a future if god truly promises a future that thing you saw last night does it look like a future why don't you stand up and address it with the word of god the problem is many believers are bankrupt of the word of god so they don't even know what to believe how many believers sit down and read their bible every day if we take statistics here just sit down for 30 minutes so when the devil begins to play false pictures in your dreams there is no scripture that can witness inside of you the truth to know that all of these are just lies that's a sign number 11 a lifestyle of sin and iniquity a lifestyle of sin and iniquity <laughs> The reason why this one is terrible is because this when the person falls into this condition or this kind of life you that individual has by himself brought himself into captivity because the bible says that those who practice the works of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of god it's a walk in the spirit that you will not fulfill the laws of the flesh so satan knows how to play an individual into indulgence of sin he starts from temptation how he comes to tempt you with the things that have not yet been dealt with in your heart the areas of your life that god has not circumcised you know you have a problem with women anything that wears skirt even if a dog wears skirt and pass you will sing the national anthem. So that part of your life has not been circumcised by the cross. That's what he will use that part to tempt you. Because he does, he needs a legal foothold. Remember, we're talking about lawful captives. He needs a legal right, a reason. He needs to secure a foothold in your life so that even if god challenges him he will tell god don't you see that this your child is living in sin now i just imagine how many times have satan challenged god in heaven because of me because of my lifestyle how many times was jesus quiet in his intercession in heaven over me simply because i refused to turn away from sin how many times you don't you think it doesn't happen like that the bible says the accuser of your brethren that accuses them day and night he's looking for something he's looking for a lifestyle just get involved in something now your friends around you are yahoo boys and you're almost yielding you have started spending the money it's just that you never get mine to do the ritual proverbs 1 verse 10 they say my son if sinners entice you he said consent not thou consent thou not it looks cheap it looks like free food but it's going to be sand in your mouth the life of sin is a life of perpetual captivity and reproach righteousness exalts a nation scripture says but sin is a reproach to any people sin when i say sin don't think don't just think immorality and all of that alone no 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 no. not only that oh miles miles as cheap as miles is miles you find it hard to forgive a small offense and you hold it to your heart your church people you are no longer a member of the church again say your church people say me i don't like waiting that they do there oh ah but you used to go there i hope i'm talking to somebody this night i'm not i'm not condemning you this is your is your day of salvation sin as cheap as mile is
How about anger? How about bitterness? Bitterness. See, I don't know. My spirit not agree with that. Anytime I see him, they put all of you in the same Bible studies group or in the same house fellowship. Say, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, choose another one for choose another one. Ah, Abba, a believer in the same church. You're under satanic, serious, systematic satanic manipulation. In fact, this one is wireless remote, wireless control, wireless microphone system. Satan doesn't need to be around you again. He has your remote somewhere else. He just needs to press, press it. So yeah. You came to church that Sunday. They gave you gave offering and dance with everybody, giving glory to that Lord. Hey, you went outside just because somebody refused to give you something or refused to greet you. You remove your your hair tie, tie it. Say, Pastor, we'll drop church here. We'll drop church here. I've seen it too. Hey, hey. I've even seen the one that pastors will drop Bible and throw blue. I mean, real, <laughs> real blue. That the other one will have to dodge. Real one. Say, I'll beat you here and go inside and preach. And they have scriptures, you know. They will tell you that Jesus flogged people. Jesus beat people. You see, when you begin to look for, you, when you see a person looking for scriptures to justify that sin, that's a life of sin. You need to repent. You are in a red zone. At that point, you are you are easily manipulatable by the enemy. Sin. How about a man of God that comes to church and preaches hard, but at home he's slapping his wife, beating his wife. Those who allow her to talk, shut up. Ah, let me save one single lady now. You have not married him, but he's already, already doing that. Take off my hand, no day. No, I'm talking to somebody now. Here, I'm talking to somebody here and now. He's already doing that. Don't stand up and go. See, remain there. Let me talk to you. This, this is you want you are coming for the will of God. You are hearing it now. You say, eh, but I love him. Keep quiet. What do you know? Do you truly love that kind of a person? See. The reason why there is no power in the church again today is not because God, has, God is powerless. There is too much sin. There is too much flesh in the camp. We have make light holy things. May God show mercy to the church again too many compromise in church brother betray brother people can lie in fact that's even the worst people can lie they call it white lie now say apostle somebody asked me say say what of, what of you if you lie to save a brother is lie lie is what lie lie how much did they give you they gave you 100,000. Say, no, they gave me 50,000. No, they gave me 50,000. No, you know. Say, Apostle, I have to be wise. You know, the Bible says be wise as a serpent. If I tell them 100,000, they will. You have to repent, too. You have to repent. You have to repent. Otherwise, Satan already has, he has, he has gotten a hold in your life. In fact, he will make you not, you will not even believe that the reason why there are problems beyond your control around you may be traceable to a lifestyle of sin but God will purge us this night and finally delay 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 18 Paul say I long to come to you even I Paul once and again he say well, what but Satan hindered us brothers and sisters many times delay is induced by the enemy in fact god told me when i come today that there are two things we must handle delay and losses are you ready to pray we will handle these two things delay and losses delay i don't care where the enemy has kept you in life i don't care how many years you have lost 
I don't care how time has gone past you. Now you are 34, you are a lady, you are not yet married. The Bible says, but I will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten. The locust, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. Even guys experience delay too. Don't say, eh, me I'm a guy, now I can stay till 40. Really? You want to give birth by 45? 45? In fact, another strategy of delay is anytime they mention marriage, say, eh, I never make money, I post, I never make money. And by 40, you never make money. By 40. That's another strategy of delay. Oh. Let me not let's not say it's only the ladies. I'm talking to the brothers too. Say, Apostle, you know now there's no romance without finance. I agree. Provided you are doing something about it and you are doing it the God way. But if that is an excuse, you are only trying to run away from another stage of your life you must transit into. That is delay. The devil has got you with the wrong mindset so that he can delay you over time. Who told you that getting married is just about you and your wife and your children? What of if your first son is a prophet that God has ordained that will bring deliverance to a people? You think it's all about you? Ah, if it was all about me, this, I, I think my pressing God I would have stopped here but the Bible says one generation shall sing his praise to another we are, we are setting up spiritual legacy spiritual inheritance that the, that firewood I said I, saw, I carried my child will not carry it let me fight all the battles the reason why Solomon had peace was because Satan had David had fought all the battles there was nobody to fight again That's why when you stand up to pray this night, you pray aggressively. Remember the scripture says, for I will contend. That's not a, that's not a, a, a smiley word. That's, that's not a, a banana or a double decker or, or hanky-panky sandwich meat pie word. That contend means contend. When you are dealing with strong power such as this, when you are dealing with any of this, you need to pray until there is a change. Pray until the heavens open. You say, Apostle, I've been praying, but they are attacking me. Well done. I came to encourage you. Every time you begin to pray and it looks like all hell rises against you, that means that your prayer is gaining mileage. You have started touching the foundation, the roots of those problems. If only you can pray more and press more, even Satan turns back. Even Satan gives up. Satan cannot stand a consistent man. I'm telling you. Hebrews 5 7 he say of Jesus Christ who in the days of his flesh who when he had offered up prayers with strong cries that's how he puts it in that scripture with strong cries unto him who was able to save him from death do you know why Jesus had to pray in the garden can I tell you why foundations were fighting him there was a spirit of untimely death in the tribe of Judah let me prove it to you Judah his firstborn, Er, died prematurely. His secondborn, Onan, died prematurely. The third one, the Bible didn't say he died, but he didn't marry. Yes or no? Ten generations later, David, as soon as they anointed him, Saul started looking for him to kill him. In fact, the Bible says when David played the harp, that the evil spirit in Saul will be taken away by God. <laughs> In that state, Saul still looked for spear. You know why? Because that spirit of untimely death was even manipulating Saul. Some people you see that just hate you without cause. It may not be them. It may be the spirit that you are contending with. It is worse when you don't know that you are contending with spirits. It is worse when you are in the middle of a battle and you don't know you are in a battle. For 13 years, he was running for his life. Finally, his enemy died. He became king. Guess what? His own son was looking for his life. His firstborn, Amnon, died prematurely. Absalom died prematurely. Adonijah died prematurely. That's why when Solomon became king, the first thing he did, sacrifice. He said, God, let's settle this thing first. <laughs> and one of the things God told him after that sacrifice, God said, 
even long life and length of days I will give you. If God didn't know that there was something fighting in the bloodline, he wouldn't have promised him that one. That's why when he came to Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, when did he die? 33. That's why he had to pray in that garden. He prayed, at least let my death be for a just cause. Let me die so that they can live. He said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. The Bible says, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus, that though he was rich yet for your sake, he became poor. That through his poverty, you become rich and you are still poor. He died so that you live. Sickness is killing you. But if you are ready to arise today, it says, but thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty will be taken and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for i will contend with him stand up on your feet we are going to ad address certain things in our lives today at least when you live here this night you will know that there is a shift in the spirit realm at least you will know that something has broken loose over you wherever you are standing or sitting can you lift your voice and just pray in the spirit just pray in the spirit for two minutes. Just, just, just pray in other tongues. Aggressively. Aggressively. With every feather inside of you. Something must shift over your life. Something must change. It's a great door and effectual. It's open unto me. But there are many other or somebody tonight who is is who's not ready to settle for less. Somebody tonight who will wrestle until you are settled. Somebody tonight who will wrestle like Jacob until you have power with God and prevail. in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. I rebuke, rebuke the spirit of the waster around my life. Around my life. Around my finances. Around my finances. Every spirit of the waster. Every spirit of the 
the wisdom. Be gone. Be gone. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Every wisdom. Every devourer. Every spirit of the devourer. That has spread your finances. That has spread your life. That is wasting what belongs to you. Come on, rebuke them, rebuke them. In the name of Jesus Christ, rebuke them, rebuke them, rebuke them. Let the west of the west 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 in Jesus name. I said to you that God told me that we should deal with losses and delay. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We want to arrest the spirit of delay. L listen, I said we want to arrest the spirit of delay. Some of you are praying this prayer not for yourself. Maybe you are settled where you are. But think about your siblings. Think about your loved ones. Think about your parents. Think about your friends, your colleagues. And I want you to be aggressive this night. God must pay and God must visit some people tonight and pay them back the arrears that they are owed. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every power of delay. Every power of delay. Around my life. Around my life. Around my family. Around my family. Be arrested. Be arrested. By fire. By fire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and turn it to prayer. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Let the power of the day be arrested. Be arrested. Be arrested. Be arrested. Be arrested. Marital delay. Academic delay. Financial delay. Career delay. Delay in business. Delay in fruitfulness. Shaka Paragata. Imparagata Kazakata. Arrest the spirit of delay. Arrest the power of delay. But behold, I've given unto you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Let the power of the name be broken. Let the power of the name be broken. Let the power of the name be arrested. Who is like it? If I own it, the land. I see that on the throne. I love a castle to the woman. Mountains bow down. And the oceans roll to the Lord of hosts. Who is
in Jesus name we pray please lift your hands let me speak over our lives next week we'll begin the series proper we are going to deal with foundations more evil and faulty foundations family foundations all of those things who will deal with it by the power of God next week but lift your hands there are people that God must pay arrears this season this season certain things that are yours have been denied you I declare in the name of Jesus anyone that has been held by the spirit of delay by the power of delay marital delay academic delay financial delay career delay delay in fruitfulness delay of any kind I stand by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus let the power of delay be broken from your life let the power of delay be broken from your life in the name of Jesus Christ hey open your hands open your two hands listen any spirit that has stolen anything from you I invade satanic warehouses. I, I invade satanic banks, demonic covens, witchcraft covens, wherever what belongs to you was stolen from. I invade those places. I retrieve those things and I place it in your hands now. I place it in your hands now. Receive what was stolen from you now. In the name of Jesus. power of God is touching people now everything that was stolen everything that was stolen everything that was stolen in the cover of darkness right now right now by thunders and lightnings I declare restore 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 in the name of Jesus That long battle in your life, tonight it comes to an end. That long reproach around your life, that garment of shame that the enemy has clothed your family, that he has tied around your career, your destiny. You are good, but it's like nobody is, is seeing you to help you, to favor you. That garment is torn off your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare the power of God is coming on at least seven people. God is saying he's restoring you to your place. He's restoring to your position. Just help them. In the name of Jesus. I declare by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. That same power comes upon your life right now. The Bible says he picks, he picks the needy from the dust and the poor from the dunghill and set him among the princes of his people wherever you are in life that power lifts you now and establishes you in your place in destiny i declare be lifted now be lifted now in the name of jesus christ Your season has come. 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 God is showing me a vision now. I'm seeing something that looks like an idol. I'm seeing the face of like an idol, like a mask. I'm seeing it coming before me. And God is saying this is the power that has terrorized a particular family here. But by the fire of the Holy Ghost, I declare judgment against that spirit. I declare judgment against that spirit. And wherever, whoever comes from that family, I speak to you and your father's house, deliverance now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. I prophesy by the God that sits in heaven and controls and rules in the affairs of men 
that before we return back on Sunday, may they be visible evidences, visible testimonies of the hand of God's power at work in your life. Contracts are approved. That's what the Lord is saying. Contracts are approved. I declare that the garment of favor rests upon your life. Listen to me. If you are going to believe this, from now to the end of this year, no more will you go to a place for favor and you will be told no. No more, no more, no more, no more. From today, every door will open for your good. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands, wave it to God and give him praise. Blessed be your great name. In Jesus name. While we stand everywhere before we close, just everybody standing, your hands down. If you are here and you want to surrender your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life afresh, the greatest deliverance is when you are taken away from the kingdom of darkness into the marvelous light of God's kingdom. You want to surrender your life to Jesus or you want to be rededicated afresh. You want to mean business with God that these prayers you have prayed will find expression in your life. Wherever you are, I want you to raise your right hand quickly, quickly, quickly. I want to pray for you quickly, quickly. The power of sin will be broken over your life. The power of darkness will be broken over your life tonight. Raise your right hand. God bless you. I'm seeing a hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please raise your right hand. Raise it high. Raise it high. I want to pray for you. If your right hand is up, please walk to the front quickly, quickly. I want to pray for you. Can we celebrate them as they come? He say we know that we have God that because we have passed from darkness. He say we know because we have passed from darkness into light. For any man that is in Christ is a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Come on, celebrate God for this source. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Please, if you are joining them, do that very quickly. The rest of you in the congregation, stretch your right hand to them and pray for them. If you are following online, you want to make a decision for Jesus or you want to rededicate your life, please repeat after me. Those of you in front, put your right hand on your chest. Whether you are coming out for the first time or you want to rededicate and surrender to God afresh, this is your night. From today, the hand of Satan over your life will be broken. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Those of you in front, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sins. I believe that you died and rose again for my salvation. I receive today eternal life. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Put your right hand on your chest. Put it there. Father, I declare by the authority of your word that their sins are forgiven. I declare that they are born again. And I declare that the yoke of sin, of Satan, of hell, help that lady, of hell, of death and the grave is broken off their life. Every satanic influence that was on their life because of sin, I declare it is broken forever. In the name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord rebuke you from their lives. I declare that these ones are sealed by the Holy Ghost and they will serve you all the days of their life. I declare that they are set free from satanic encroachments, from satanic yokes. And the name of 